Today on Alaskan Ballistics, Glock 29, 20, 40, Browning X.10 millimeter. Let's see how it does. Welcome back to Alaskan Ballistics. My name is Chuck. I hope you're doing well today. Today we have the Glock 29 versus the Glock 20 versus the Glock 40. And this is like the fifth or sixth video we've done in the series. We're going to just verse these over the chronograph. And then I'm going to see how these rounds do out of the Glock 20 and 40. We tried to capture a 29, but we ran out of light and we couldn't find the bullet. But today we're shooting the Browning X point, 10 millimeter. Says it's supposed to be going 1225 for velocity for 600 foot pounds. So it's a standard kind of medium power 10 millimeter. Not as much as, you know, Underwood or Buffalo Boar are going to be, but not what was wimpy as Federal. So they have the X in the hollow point, and that's to keep clothing from going in there and clogging it up. We're going to see if these are a good personal defense round. We also brought the stock block barrel and spring and the nine inch lone wolf barrel to use out of the Glock model 40, which has the six and a half inch KKM barrel in it. So you should get a good velocity reads on what this thing can do. And then we will be able to show you what it does through some denim, a pork shoulder. We're gonna catch it in water jugs, kind of a redneck science test. And if it'll do good in that, it'll do good in ballistic shell as well. I Trust me, I've done the comparison. Without further ado, let's get to the video. Glock 29, uh, 20 versus 40, uh, Browning X point ammunition. Here we go. Speed 1035, 1050, and an error. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's got three reads there. Here we go, Glock 20. Let's go. See what it does. 1138, 1120. 1140. There we go. Glock model 40, stock barrel. 1178, 1180, 1189, 1147. So it didn't get what Federal said it did on the box, even in a six inch barrel. Kind of typical with Glocks lock up, but still it's a six inch barrel. Let me see how it does with the KKM barrel and the, the uh, NDZ spring. All right, here we go. KKM barrel, 22 pound spring. Here we go. 12, 1223, 1209, 12, So not bad. Not bad. It was getting just above what the box said. And it took a six and a half inch barrel and a proper lock up 22 pound spring to get to the box velocity or just above. Let's see what the nine inch barrel does. Here we go. Nine inch barrel, Glock model 40. Here we go. 1257. 1291, 1253, and 1261. So 30, 40 feet per second more than the 6.5 inch KKM barrel. That's pretty typical. The nine inch barrel doesn't really get that much more velocity unless you get lighter grains, really light grains. So as far as velocity, browning, you need to check your powder charges, check what you're testing your ammo in. This stuff has done well for me in the past expansion. So here is our add up slide. I'll let you pause it and read the numbers. It was interesting the various amounts of standard deviation we had. Overall, I'm disappointed in these numbers because it took a nine inch barrel to get above the box velocity. Should have happened in the six inch barrel and the six and a half. This week's shout out goes to Michael Kaler who was helping me on the cameras. He helps a lot with me and Shook's channel. Go check him out. He deserves more than 324 subscribers. 
Also check out my other channel, Boss Custom Music Writing, where I write my classical music. If you're listening to some of it now in the background, make sure that you haven't been unsubscribed from it as YouTube is playing that game on that channel too. Block 20, Browning X point. Let's see what it does to a pork shoulder. We've got four layers of denim, and then we've got the pork shoulder. We got uh, milk jugs filled with water behind it, and a dirt bag to catch it. Dirt bag's not Chook. No, it's not Michael Kaler either. Here we go, ready. All right. See so what we did. It looks like I, the bullet started went, going sideways. Yeah, so the bullet hit right where I was aiming and came through here right where I was aiming and went right in here, slightly left to center, and it just got more and more left as it went through. You know, kind of like people that go to California, they get more and more left as they go through. And it went into our side jug and then went out the side jug and in here, and looks like it might have hit this and bounced off. We have a, a new hole here. In and out here. Looks like it bounced off again. Yeah, we can't catch a bullet today. You found it? As we were looking and getting set up for take two, I found it sitting right there. Wow, on top of the bag. So it came up and flipped or something. So you were right where it came out and then hit this and just kind of bounced up, I guess. That's... It probably just rolled over. Yeah. Lost so much energy by that point, but wow. Well, cool, that's a Glock 20 Browning BXP. I'd use that for self-defense. Didn't expand much, but it peeled back really well. It's not a good width expander like an HST or something, but yeah, I'd peeled like to back see... really well. I'd, I'd be really interested to see what it weighs because it looks like most of it is there. The pedals all stayed together pretty much in the lead expand, except for this one is a bit off. So I'd be really interested to see exactly how well this performs when we weigh it out. Yeah, let's weigh it out and let's shoot another one with the uh, Glock 40. Of course. Absolutely. Here we go. Glock Model 40, 6.5 inch KKM barrel. That's what I carry the most. So. Let's do the Browning X point, 180 grain, see what it does. All right, let's see what we did. Go check the left about halfway back on the table there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it came out the side, huh? Bounced off and came out the side. It's right there on the table. <laughs> so we're looking at four layers of denim went through. Pork shoulder went through. Yep, there's it did actually some damage to that pork shoulder. Went through the water jug. That was well, th and this was water jug two, so it went through one, two, three, four. Bounced off, came off the side and bounced and landed right here on the table. Let me get a close up of that. What does it look like? About, you... about like the other one. Yeah? Yeah. Yep, this one's slightly more even, but again, the other one wasn't bad. It was just slightly uneven, but that's good yeah. though. So compare them here. Yeah. So. This As is you're... the 40, this is the 20. I guess the next we do a 29, right? Of course. Block 29, Browning X point. Here we go. All right, it blew it. It blew that first jug. Let's 
see what it does. Four layers of denim, clean through. Here's the entry point. Yep. The exit point right there. Yeah. It tore up a lot of meat in there, hit a bone for sure. Mm -hmm. Look at that, straight on penetration. This time it's deflecting to the right. Went up. In. Into the side one here. It did not exit the side one. All right. But I can tell. No bullet. So maybe it didn't enter. Maybe yeah. it bounced with maybe just it enough force. Bounced, it didn't enter. All right, we have the Browning 10 millimeter ammunition. Here's one of the bullets. 177.5. Not too shabby for weight retention. There's supposed to be 180 grain there. Not too bad. Here's the other bullet. 158.9, so really good weight retention, which is really surprising considering how much they deflected through the bone. Here you can see the bullets nice and up close. Let's measure them. This one has an average expansion of, looks like 0.591. And then it's got these petals that stick out a little bit. Putting it at 0.68 on that one. We use this pedal. 0.755. Not bad expansion. Let's see this other one here. Let's see 0.589 that way. And let's see. 0.614 that way. Apologize, my digital calipers are dead on the battery. Let's see, 0.701 that way. Not bad expansion. Thank you for watching the video on the X.10 millimeter with the Glock 29, 20, and 40. Tell me what you think of this ammo in the comments. I think it's a decent ammo. You do have to watch for it deviating left and right. It did that a lot on us. And that's just something straight line penetration is actually important because if you put your shot placement where you want to and then it deviates from that shot placement, your shot placement did you no good. That being said, I think it'd probably be okay for home defense. I probably would not use this hunting because I wouldn't want it to deviate in an animal so badly. Tell me what you think in the comments about this ammo. It seems to be well manufactured. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, Subscribestar, The Jump, MeWe. All of my affiliate links are at MeWe, so go join my MeWe group. God bless. Take care. We will see you at the range.